Hello everybody and welcome back to the Battle City map. My name is Agile Zenix and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build the contraption for Village Wars. And I say contraption because I'm not even too entirely sure how I built this thing. Seriously. Um, no, seriously, no, I do, I do. I, no, I know how I built it. I've actually slightly simplified it now. I've removed the buttons on top here to prevent people from uh, pushing them whilst there's no game going on. But as soon as the game starts, I put the buttons back on here. And it's a design feature I've decided to add. Uh, so let's head down. We're still going around. Let's go through one of these. Um, yeah. These won't be always here for access, by the way. I'll just pull them here just for the hell of it. So, this kind of looks complicated. I say kind of because it's not actually. Um, I've slightly redesigned it, slimlined it slightly, and made it even easier to use. So I've got red team chest and blue team chest traps used to be here, which no longer count. So I can get rid of these. And I've moved them back here. So, as you can see, the chests work slightly differently. And the counter slightly works differently. So, here how it works. Right? We've got the contraption here, which switches the beacon colours. Which puts out this redstone block, which activates and deactivates the score counters for both the red team and the blue team. We've got this piston here, which pulls out this resident block here, which deactivates these resident torches, which unlocks the game for play. Now there is one, uh, two hopper buffers here for the game, so that it all works. And I've added this new feature, which is a cutoff point for the score count as soon as the game ends. So as soon as the game ends, these all you have to do is simply flick these levers and it will lock these hoppers and it will stop the score from continuing through. So you get to know how many each team has. So for example, for this, blue team has a stack and almost a half, or just over a half, and red team has two stacks and 11, which means the red team would have won a game if they were going one right now. So say, let's see, I've added a button here so I can show an example. So. Right now, the game's in motion. Blue team is currently active. If you're on red team, you do have to push it twice for the very first push. So red team is starting to get points. And as you can see, the way I've set it up, it locks off this first hopper, which builds up the points. And blue team no longer gets points. Red team gets points. And then vice versa, if I push it again. So say the game has ended, and I come down here to lock it off. By now, blue team's got the beacon on, so I'll just quickly flip that. Blue team no longer gets points. Red team doesn't get points, just in case someone messes around. I'll flick that again. And yeah, I can check who won. And it's more precise. So this could have been a very close game. Two and almost three stacks. And if the blue team would have had more points going through, they would have almost won. Now the first game I did scramble and was struggling with it and I had to simplify it a little bit and this is how I did it so it's pretty awesome. All these hoppers back here from before this one is all filled up for the game as you can see and what that gives us is a 10 minute interval. It will take 10 minutes of constant activation for these chests to fill up with all, from all these hoppers and that's how I designed it. So each game is 10 minutes. You can increase it or decrease it however you want, but I recommend having at least 10 minutes, even if it's a five minute game. So without further ado guys, I'm going to go to uh, hop over to my redstone building world, which I originally developed this concept for, and I'm gonna show you guys how to build this contraption. So I see you there. So guys, welcome to my redstone building world. The world where I have my farms, uh, prototype doors, uh, challenges that was done for reasons. And I've got slime here. Why are you here? Get away. 
um, yeah, this is where I built all my redstone stuff. Um, figure out how to do stuff like this, which I like, and like this, which I also like, and also develop my own stuff. Kind of like the original Spitra Rua area. Yeah. <laughs> So it's hard to see this one, so I built it out a little bit more, so out in the open. So you can see exactly what goes on here. Same design, except for it's got the counter, the original counter that I had for the Battle City map, which we saw was slightly different. This is another design I came up with. I started doing the whole cutoff thing, but I'm going to show you exactly how to build this thing now. So first of all, you're going to want any blocks of your choice, you're going to need some chests, blue stained glass, red stained glass, and you're going to need some sticker pistons, pistons, redstone block, redstone torch, and repeater, and also hopper. So let's just, first of all, create ourselves a beacon. So I might as well just make this down here, you know. Uh, it doesn't need to be a big beacon, unless you want to give buffs in the game, then by all means you can give buff buffs. But this isn't meant for buffs. Let's uh, hurry up and get some a beacon on. Come on. I'm on the clock on this redstone tutorial. My device. There we are. Go away. Oh god, they're multiplied. Um wait. So let's build this a little bit higher. So about here. I like to add end portal frames here since it lets through the light and uh, it looks good for the game. So that's all you really need there. First of all, it's important that you ascertain whereabouts everything is going to go. So this would usually be covered up like this. This block here you want to have the, your button on. So let's hurry up and grab a button. I did forget to make sure you needed a button, so that's where your button will go. The other design I've got on my uh, thing on Battle City has two buttons, but you don't really need it. It's just simple rewiring at the bottom. I can show you that at the end if you'd like. Uh, so, first thing first, we're going to need a block underneath that button with a redstone dust. And then you need a but um, a block underneath there, which will go there. So you've sort of got this shape here now. You're going to need a repeater to take out the redstone signal from the button press, and that will go on into this block here. This is where you need some uh, redstone trickery or piston trickery. You need a stick piston facing upwards. I said facing upwards. There we are. And what that would do is, is give a half tick pulse onwards from this block. So instead of it being a full tick, as you can see, it's, a, it's going to be half tick. So let's show you how that works. So if I just put a redstone dust there, as you can see, you can't see it. Let's put a repeater there. See how quick the flash was. So now, what that will do is that will, if we place a stick piston right on there and a redstone block, as you can see, because it's such a quick redstone pulse, the repeater has time to push things out but not retract things back and vice versa if you press it again. Just like that. Now that's the first stage, that's the most complicated part of this entire redstone build. It's actually pretty simple once you get used to it. So next, you need to set up the beacon colours. So you're going to need a something like this. Just make sure it's all right. Uh, you're going to need a stick piston here. Uh, let's just put a block here so I can place it. That will have one of your colours on. And then you do the same around here. Instead of having it straight into a piston, pop block there, which will have another 
focused in there which will have your other color and then you just simply wire your redstone so that goes up to there and that's all the active and there you go it's red push the button it's blue and that's the basis of how this works next is the counter and surprisingly enough that's also very simple um, you can just simply put a normal piston there if you want it will save room and it will be much better for it and you put a, another block there redstone block there now what that will do is that will go out to this block I believe it will work like this and you need some redstone torches so let's grab those on either side and if I just test this out right now that should deactivate the torches which it doesn't so it has to be one further away so you can put the torch uh, yeah my bad so you put a couple of torches here see I always make mistakes so you make sure you have two blocks going out and right there that's where you're going to have your hoppers so on the third one hopper central boom boom for example now get back your redstone place one there and there that will lock the hoppers in place and place one there and that will deactivate the redstone torch so here's the slightly more irritating part of the hoppers part since you have to crouch every time you place a hopper down I have to have a line of uh, where the hoppers will go at least so the new design I developed requires that there's going to be a couple of hoppers starting from about here and goes across like that make sure that you do the crouching stuff for the hoppers uh, so it goes into the right location and it's simple Simp that's simply it's this really let's just get this back out get some dust back out and move this across hmm sorry guys I screwed up again I think did I? yeah slightly slightly screwed up it needs to be one block further away for the hoppers my bad we all make mistakes guys we all make mistakes let's just correct that rectify it nope don't want that hop up there my misplacement misplacement right so this cut off you have your chests here simply put this on the other side exactly how I put it here put another redstone dust on there as well let's just keep the blocks on my quicks yeah uh, you do the same here uh, let's see I just keep putting the wrong blocks away for some reason just don't need the hoppers anymore Put that there, bring that down to here so it doesn't interfere with any of the other redstone. And there you go, that's your score counter. All you need to do then is just add however many hoppers you want at the back. I suggest seven, which will give you approximately 40 minutes and 56 seconds of constant block transference into the chest, which keeps your score and the best thing about this design guys is that it's minimalistic redstone it doesn't lag out your game i've tested it a lot and if it's like this it doesn't actually lag out your game so let's test it out for you guys um i'll just put a few more hoppers down now you could double them up like i did there to save space but if i just go one two three four five six seven and then 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's your 10 minute buffer ish. Fill them all up in, with the appropriate blocks. As you can see, the one that's active will be the opposite color. So blue, blue team will be this chest. Red team will be this chest. Uh, let's just place some random blocks in. So let's just go like this. Uh, let's reactivate, a reset, should I say, so we can test it out. Just place 64 in there and 64 in there. As for the cutoff, it's very simple. Uh, let's just take one back for a second. <laughs> As for the cut off, we just simply put the levers like so. So now we can just cut off the poppers. In fact, wrong place, sorry. You want it right, ne right before the chest, not right after. So the cut off will just be there. My bad. It's the first in-depth redstone tutorial I've ever done guys, give me a break please. Uh, <laughs> so, to test this thing out, let's put that block back in there because it's probably all going to go very quickly. Let's see, it's a 25 second thing, so let's push that there. It's all active, blue team is starting to get points, then red team's getting points, and then if you want to say, right, that's enough, the game's over, you push those levers, you always push the one that's deactivated first because obviously that's not gaining the points that is and then you check who's going to be the winner remember which team colour it is so you put signs on the chest or you put the appropriate block around so red team is lit up not lit up so that's red team red team's got 12 points blue team's got 9 points red team wins simple as that guys I've tried my best to explain this in depth for you guys. I hope you could follow it. If you couldn't, then uh, my bad. Now, if you can actually slimline this de little design that I've got here in any shape, way, or form, I want to see it, guys. I really do. I want to see it. If you can make this more simple and better, if you can improve upon it, I would love, definitely would love to see it because this is all my own design, guys. I have only borrowed a few of the redstone mechanics from other designs this is the only one I've built that I could truly call my own I don't even know what to call it uh, it's a scorekeeper of sorts so it's uh, I could say hold on I've got to just turn my spawning and griefing off I don't know why it was on just get rid of ow I turned to swipe on stuff turning it to uh, peaceful. There we are. Oh, the text. So, uh, yeah. I don't know what to call this. Call it uh, IGL score counter. This is the IGL score counter, guys. Off the top of my head, I'm just going to say that. In giving life score counter. IGL score counter. So, if you can improve this design, I would love to see it. Can't wait. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and also subscribe for more. Tell me in the comment section what you think, if you're going to be using this or if it's uh, if you're not sure if you can improve it or not. I'd love to know. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.